to half the battle. Today, we're going green. And I don't mean like Captain Planet. Meet Hit and Run. This figure was released in 1988 with all original body parts. And do you get the feeling this guy doesn't want to be seen? I mean, there's camouflage, and then there's camouflage. And honestly, I really like the look of this figure. He looks very military while still looking unique. And the detailing on the toy is more impressive than usual. You've got the camo pattern not only on the uniform, but on the face and arms as well. And they even painted the whites of his eyes! That's unusual for a G.I. Joe figure, but it was really necessary here due to the camo. They even added yet another color with the red on his visor. They really went the extra mile with this figure! This is such a good toy that I'm struggling to come up with anything negative to say here. Except maybe that the helmet isn't removable, but that's a really, really minor point in case of this figure. So yeah, an awesome action figure. And the awesomeness continues when it comes to his accessories. He's got a pretty cool looking machine gun and ditto knife. He also has a duffel bag that has storage space for the knife. The best thing though is the grappling hook with tether that is part of the bag. You can pull out the hook and twist the handle to reel it back in. This accessory explains why he has a loop on his waist piece, so you can put the string through to help him climb or rappel down. This is a very intricate setup. Once again, they really went the extra mile here. And speaking of going the extra mile, there's a variation of this figure that comes with even more accessories. There was a Target exclusive version that came with a parachute pack like the one Sky Patrol had. The figure itself and the other accessories are identical to the regular version, so the only way to know if you've got the Target exclusive one is if you have it mint on card. And as a little crazy eBay stuff bonus, this carded variant tends to go for insane amounts at auction, like over a thousand bucks insane. And that was the only figure Hit and Run got in the original line. Well, in the United States anyway. In Europe, we got a second version. The original is a very, very well camouflaged figure. Now meet the exact opposite of that. This is Tiger Force Hit and Run from 1991. The same figure, with the same accessories, but a different, baffling color scheme. The orange with the black stripes, the only thing that's Tiger Force like by the way, is anti-camouflage. And the blue shirt makes him look like it's casual Friday. And his face is unpainted now, without white in his eyes. But for some reason, they painted his hands so it looks like he's wearing gloves now. Every single color choice they made here is just head-scratching. Yeah, I can't say I'm a fan of this version. Oh, and for completeness sake, Brazil also got a version of this character in 1994, without the green paint on his face and arms again, but with the black stripes. Hit and Run got a few more figures in the modern line, and we'll take a look at two of them, both from 2015. The first one was part of the Assault on Cobra Island set, and it's completely made up of existing body parts. Still, for a Frankenstein figure, they really managed to nail the look of the original. Plus, he has a removable helmet now that the first one was missing. Unfortunately, this figure suffers from the same thing that plagues so many modern figures. It's too tall and thin, making him look lanky. His last figure is from the 50th anniversary line, and it's quite the departure from what came before. Hell, this guy could double for Grey Gargoyle. This figure was also completely Frankenstein, but unlike the other one, you couldn't tell this was Hidden Run unless I told you. It's nothing special, really. And those were the toys. I very much prefer the original, it's definitely the best version. All the others go from meh to what were they thinking for me. That means it's time to talk about the character, starting with the file card. And first, we'll take a quick look at the card art. His skin isn't green in it. He he does have green stripes instead of the black ones, so maybe the green thing was a last minute decision by the toy designers. Anyway, on to the file card itself. He was orphaned when he was just three years old due to a drunk driver. Wow, that's dark for a G.I. Joe file card origin story. Wait, his parents were killed by a drunk driver and he picked a code name Hit and Run. 
Why, why on earth would he do that? That would be like Bruce Wayne calling himself Gunshot Wound. Or people calling Harry Potter a Vada Kedavra instead of the boy who lived. Anyway, back to the file card. He ran away a lot. He just ran a lot in general. This made him the perfect infantryman, since he could run really well. No, really, except for being an orphan, the fact that he's a good runner is the only information we get about him. Oh, and his secondary military specialty is mountaineering, explaining some of his accessories. Nowhere, however, does it say he knows how to use a parachute. Hell, the Assault on Cobra Island version even specifically mentions he likes to keep his feet on the ground. So the Target exclusive version isn't canon, I guess. We're also quickly gonna mention the Belgian file card. That's right. This week, not only are you getting a review and some crazy eBay stuff, but also some foreign file card fun. That's three topics for the price of one. By Grabthar's hammer. What a savings. And why do I want to talk about the Belgian file card? Because his name isn't hit and run on that one. You want to guess what his name is? I mean, you can try, you'll never get it, but... No? Well, okay. Well, bring out the gimp. I think the gimp's sleeping. He's called Gimp. Yeah, Gimp. Sometimes you have to work for jokes, and sometimes they hand them to you on a silver platter. In case you're wondering, a gimp is a type of running shoe in Dutch, so this does make sense. Moving on, since this character was introduced in 1988, it fell in between the Sunbow and D cartoon series, so he doesn't appear in either. That just leaves the comic series! He shows up in one issue of the regular comic and three issues of Special Missions, but he doesn't do all that much in them. None of the stories are about him. Issue 80 of the regular comic is about introducing the Rolling Thunder and a battle over a newly formed island. And Hit and Run sure is there. And he looks awful! Look at the design choice here! Look at the green they chose for the skin! And no camouflage pattern either. He, he looks like he's from an entirely different comic. Hell, he looks like the Great Kazoo. The design choice here is just baffling. Oh, and all he does in the issue is point out Cobra's artillery can't hit them because they can't elevate enough. Thanks for contributing there, Hit and Run. Great job! Also, where is your eye pupil, you freak? Fortunately, his look in the special missions issues is much better and more like the toy. Though they go with the card art look of just having camo stripes on his face, not the full green paint job. Probably a good idea. I don't think this would look good on a comic book character. Especially after seeing the first attempt at it. I do have to wonder though, does he paint his face green every day even when he's not going on mission? Like when he just has latrine duty or something? Anyway, in the special missions issues, he doesn't do much, like I said. He runs a lot, so that's on brand. And in two of the issues, both hostage situation stories, he kills some terrorists. In the third issue, called Scoop, he berates Scoop and gets shot in the knee. But I'm not gonna make that joke. Skyrim was released in 2011, people. It's time to move on. One thing did stand out that I liked. When they're in a snow setting, he's wearing a different uniform to actually aid in being camouflaged. It's nice that they didn't have to adhere to the toy design all of the time. Though now I sorta wish there was an Arctic Hit and Run figure. And that was Hit and Run. Overall, a great classic first figure. First rate. The others you can take or leave. As far as the character goes, well, questionable pick of codename in two different languages, no less, and he really likes running. Also, um, he was present in the comic book, but not much more. Yeah, they could have done a little more with him. Still, one hell of a cool first figure. Well, I'll see you next time, everybody. And hey, why not like, share, and subscribe if that's your thing?